Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. And you're probably wondering, why am I measuring my keys? Well, that's a good damn question. Well, I found something on Thingiverse called a blade key. And uh, this is actually a really cool new way to hold your keys. Basically, you put the keys in there like blades on a utility knife. And you flip them out as you need them so they're not jingling around on your pocket and stuff. So I'm taking measurements right now because I'm going to do something a little different. I found a model on Thingiverse that actually uses something called OpenSCAD. And OpenSCAD is like a language for defining a CAD model, like a solid model. But it's configurable. So I downloaded the SCAD file, and I'm, and I'm going to modify it so that it fits my keys perfectly. So this is a vi I'm going to print something that's a complete custom fit for what I'm doing. All right, so this is the open SCAD software that I downloaded, and I actually needed it to open the SCAD file. And uh, the SCAD is actually like a scripting language. It's like defining a 3D object through script. So you can see all the variables. It looks a lot like just a standard you know, C-type programming language. And uh, you go through here, and let's give a shout out to James David Bush for creating this awesome model. You can see his information up there if you'd like to send him an email. But I'm entering in my own custom width and length, as you can see right here. And those are from my measurements that I took earlier. So now I'm going to come up here after, well, here, I guess I'm going to look at the model a little bit. And you tell it to compile it. So now it's going to go through and compile all that code and build a brand new CAD model uh, to those dimensions that I've, that I've referenced. And then down below, he's using those dimensions to set the width and the length without messing with the rest of the model. So it's not the same as just grabbing the whole thing and resizing it. It's custom building it for my application based on those input variables. So if you look down below at the code, I mean, it's it's pretty damn complex. I mean, it's not something that I would that I would honestly be doing. I would use more of a conventional CAD program. But this is really cool for people that are creating these because then you can just come in and change the parameters and print something out, and it's completely custom tailored. So here I'm exporting to an STL file because that's what Kira likes to do. And Kira is the software that the Ultimaker uses for slicing the model. So now that I've exported as STL, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up Kira now and get the model loaded. All right, now we have our STL file loaded up in Cura, and you can see here that it's, you know, it's a solid object. It's ready to print. It's got all of its little intricacies, and it says blade key on the side, which is awesome. This is like a really, really cool invention. Also, check out there's a Kickstarter project. I'll try to get that down in the description for you if you want to go fund the Kickstarter to have this made in aluminum. So if you look over there, I'm setting the parameters now for the quality and the fill, and I'm leaving most of that stuff alone because it's all set perfectly. I want it to be 100% because I want it to be a solid fill item. You don't, And I'm also turning the fan off because I have the air conditioner running in my room, and I find that things peel away from the bed a lot less um, when I'm not running the fan when I have the AC on. So now uh, you can go into the advanced parameters, and you can also, this is where you can disable the fan. And you can also set a lot of other stuff like, you know, extrusion, extrusion and speed and all the stuff to fine-tune your, uh, your printer to your printing project. Uh, now what I'm going to do is prepare the model. And if you've seen this in my other videos before, it's basically going through and creating a plan. It's basically converting this 3D model into a series of flat layers. The printer's then going to print one at a time on top of each other. And that's how these extrusion-based printers work, is they print a layer at a time. They print a layer, then the bed moves down a little bit, and then they print again and print again and print again. And in this particular case, this model has 128 layers, even though it's actually a very small item. And I'm not even using the highest resolution. So now you can see here, each one of these little lines that you see building up, those represent the path of the tool head. So basically the, well, I shouldn't call it the tool head, the print head. And the print head basically follows those paths that draw each layer. So the program is basically creating a plan of attack. How do I print this ob object when all I can do is print a layer at a time? And you can actually go down through the layers and see exactly how the printer is going to maneuver the head and everything. I don't generally do that. I just trust the printer and say, hey, go for it. So now we're going to save it to the SD card. Uh, and now that it's on the SD card, we can take it over to the printer and start the printing autonomously. Well, unfortunately, guys, I lost the first video uh, where the print was starting. When I do these time-lapse prints, I do them in uh, multiple files over a period of time, and one of the files was corrupted. So you can see we're actually starting uh, about halfway, maybe a little less than halfway through the print. So basically, the print head is going to go replicate that model a layer at a time, just like you saw in Kira. And when it's done, I'll basically pry it off the bed, and we'll get to putting it together. All right, so now we're done printing. We went ahead and pried it off, and it's actually a very, very clean model. You can see the resolution blade keys written on the side. It's perfectly clean. You can read it. There's even small little holes for the zip tie to loop through, and they're completely clean. I didn't have to do any cleanup on this model whatsoever. So, um, you know, that's what I come to expect from the Ultimaker. It actually does a really, really phenomenal job for this type of printer. 
So now what I got to do is take all the keys off my old keychain. All right, so now that we're done with that, what you want to do is take all of your keys and line them up in a row. That's what I'm going to do right here. Um, and you want all the holes to line because you have to feed the zip tie through it. And let me tell you, this process is a bitch. Um, take your time. Be slow. Don't pry on this thing. Don't destroy it. Just take your time trying to get the zip tie to cooperate. Because when you have a ton of keys that have holes in different places and different widths and sizes, and you got to loop it back through twice, it takes a little bit, a little bit of time. So just finesse it. But you can see I've got the zip tie through all the keys, and then I pull it out, so I've got them all lined up. So now what I'm going to do is now that they're all lined up, I'm going to slip the little blade key over it. And now I'm going to wrestle with it for a long time to try to get it in there. Dum 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 da dum dum da dum 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 da dum dum da dum 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 da dum dum da dum 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 da dum dum da dum. I know you guys just love my singing. So here I am moving my fast, my, my fast, got my hands a thousand miles an hour, feeding this thing through. And then once you get it all the way through one side, you got to loop it back through the other set of hoops. And then if you're like me, you discover that you put the zip tie in backwards. You have to take the whole damn thing out and do it again. And now I've moved the item out of frame. God, I suck at this sometimes. All right. Well, I'm going to wrestle with it for a little while longer here. All right. At this point, I just said, screw it. And I finally got it together. I went down to the garage and got some pliers and, and wrestled with it. And I also took a hammer to, to bash in the little nub on the end. But you can see here that uh, you pull the key out like it's a knife. And then you just slide it back in like it's a little, uh, not a utility knife, like a Swiss Army knife. And you just flip out the key you want. And then you just pinch it a little bit and it holds the key in place. And you can rotate it, open a door, stuff like that. And then you just fold it right back in there. And it uh, keeps together. It doesn't make any rattles or any noise. And there's another plug for the blade key, folks. This is actually a really, really cool invention. And it seems durable. I've thrown it around, dropped it on the floor. I wanted to make sure that, like, the keys being in there and the weight of it wasn't going to break the PLA. But uh, I've had absolutely zero problems. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.